So in this video, we are ultimately going to derive out the entropy of mixing two ideal gases. And we're going to start with a basic fundamental formula of thermodynamics. And I find these problems can be a little daunting, especially if you're not used to them, since this is definitely not a discrete form and you need to do some multivariable calculus to approach it. And so the first thing you want to do when you see a formula such as this, you want to take the integrals of all the derivatives. And you want to assess them from their initial to final state. Another thing to notice right off the bat is this right here is the same exact thing as saying delta S. So now we want to approach the rest of the problem. So we'll start with the first term right here. And as we notice, this CV isn't changing with respect to anything. So we can assume that to be a constant. And from calc 2, we know that we can just pull the CV or the constant out in front of the integral and assess it from there. Another thing that we notice is that will leave us with 1 over T dt. And we know that, that taking the integral of that is equivalent to ln of that variable. So we'll start there. and we're assessing it from initial to the final state. We'll move on to the next part of the equation. We notice that we need to take the partial of dp dt first in order to solve this. We also know that p through the ideal gas law is equal to nRT over V and so we might as well substitute that into the equation. Another thing that we can notice is that since in this partial derivative right here, we're only taking it with respect to t. That means n, r, and v are constant in this. And so we can pull out those terms as well. And that will leave us with d, t of d, t. And as you can see, this obviously just goes to 1. And so let's rewrite this. We'll carry down this part. But first, let's assess this This. Um, difference right here. As we know, saying take, taking the integral, we assess it from the final to initial state. So that would be the equivalent of writing this.
And as we know from the rules of log, if we write ln x minus ln of y, we realize that that's equal to ln of x over y. And additionally, we can just pull out the CV through the distributive property. So this term right here will be equal to CV ln of T2 all over T1. And also similarly, we notice that this second part of the derivative is the quote is very similar to the first part where we had CV as the constant right there. The same thing applies to the NR. And just as we are integrating T when it's a variable on the bottom, we can do the same for this. And the same rules apply with the rules of logs. So now we have our differential equation in a discrete form where we don't have to take any integrals to solve. So now let's solve for our original question where we had two gases in separate containers, separate parts of the same container with a partition in the middle. We're going to remove the partition so the gases can mix. And first let's think about this intuitively. So we have V1 with n number of moles and we'll say that's equivalent to vi and the same thing for the second one so if v2 we'll say that's equivalent to vi and put subscripts 1 and 2 on it as well however the v final when they mix will be equivalent to adding the two together so we'll have v1 plus v2 And also, as we noticed, we're taking this at constant temperature as pressure. So we don't even have to worry about the second term because if these two variables are the same, the ln of 1 just goes to 0. Additionally, we want to so we're trying to figure out enthalpy of mixing. Say. And that's the equivalent of what's going to happen to the first gas and plus what's going to happen to the second gas. So that's what our formula will, will look like. And as we just discussed right here, the delta S for each of these variables is going to equal to nr ln of V2 over V1. And that'll be what we were trying to figure out. And V2 is the same thing as saying from the final state as we specified over here. So we could solve it from this point if we knew the volumes and how everything changed and the moles. However, if we're just giving the moles, we can easily find this out too using mole fractions. So as you can see, this V final up here will be equal to V1 plus V2 all over V2. 
that'll give us this term. And additionally, we know that the volume is equal to nRT over P. And using, and we can do that for both of the gases in their initial states. Then using simple algebra, we can combine these two terms and write one in the bottom to get this. I hope you can intuitively see how that happened and you can also realize that we can cancel out these two terms so all we're left is N1 plus N2 all over N2 we'll be able to separate we'll be able to substitute in for that term. However through the rules of logs writing LN of x over y is the same thing as writing the negative ln y over x. So performing that will be left with the ln of n2 over n1 plus n2. Also we notice that's the same thing as writing a mole fraction which is the number of moles of an individual species all over the total number of moles. And that's abbreviated with chi. And so the same thing will apply to the first gas over here. And remember, since we flipped these over, we're going to have to write a negative in front of the term. So that gives us our answer in a discrete form where we only have to know the number of moles to find the change in entropy for mixing. Another thing important to notice is by definition the mole fraction is always going to be less than 1. That will also mean that we're taking the lawn with respect to something less than 1 which we know always to be negative. Therefore, a negative times a negative and a negative times a negative will always give these two values a positive answer. Therefore, delta S of mixing will always have to be greater than zero. And that also follows in line with the second law of thermodynamics. So I hope you saw how to solve a problem when you start with a differentiable thermodynamics equation.